Public health. It's a term we often hear, but what does it truly mean? In essence, public health is the science and art of preventing disease. It's about promoting health and well-being for all people. This field is vast and complex, encompassing various disciplines. Charles Edward A. Winslow, a prominent figure in public health, defined it in 1920. His definition highlights the importance of organized community efforts. These efforts aim to prevent disease and promote health. Winslow's definition remains relevant even today. It underscores the fundamental principles guiding public health practice. Public health is not just about treating the sick, it's about preventing people from getting sick in the first place. This proactive approach is crucial for creating healthier societies. Imagine a world where diseases are prevented before they even occur. That's the ultimate goal of public health. Long before microscopes and modern medicine, ancient civilizations grappled with health and disease. The Hippocratic Corpus, a collection of ancient Greek medical texts, offers a glimpse into these early efforts. Attributed to Hippocrates, the father of medicine, these writings revolutionized how diseases were understood. The Hippocratic Corpus shifted away from supernatural explanations for illness. Instead, it emphasized the importance of observation, diet, and the environment in health. This marked a turning point in medical thought. The concept of humors played a central role in Hippocratic medicine. These humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile were believed to influence health and temperament. While this theory has since been debunked, it reflects the early attempts to rationalize disease. The Hippocratic Oath, still recited by medical graduates today, embodies the ethical principles espoused in the corpus. It emphasizes the physician's duty to the patient's well-being above all else. Few events in human history have been as devastating as the Black Death. This bubonic plague pandemic ravaged Europe and Asia in the 14th century. It left an indelible mark on societies, shaping demographics, economies, and even art. The Black Death, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, spread rapidly through flea-infested rodents. Its symptoms were gruesome and often fatal, including swollen lymph nodes, fever, and blackening of the skin. The plague's rapid spread and high mortality rate instilled terror and chaos. Misconceptions about the plague's origins were rampant. Some believed it was divine punishment, while others blamed astrological events. The lack of scientific understanding fueled fear and superstition. Despite the devastation, the Black Death led to some positive changes. It spurred innovations in quarantine measures and public sanitation. The pandemic highlighted the urgent need for effective disease prevention strategies. Section 4. Girolamo Fracastoro, A Visionary Glimpse into Contagion Centuries before the germ theory of disease was established, Girolamo Fracastoro, an Italian physician, proposed groundbreaking ideas about contagion. His theories were far ahead of his time, challenging the conventional wisdom of the era and laying the foundation for modern epidemiology. In his book, De Contagione et Contagiosis Morbis, from 1546, Fracastoro challenged prevailing beliefs about disease transmission. This work was a monumental step in the history of medicine, as it questioned the established norms and opened new avenues for scientific inquiry. Fracastoro rejected the miasma theory, which held that diseases were caused by bad air. This theory was widely accepted at the time, and it took great courage and insight to propose an alternative explanation. Instead, he suggested that tiny, unseen particles, which he called seeds, could spread disease. These seeds, he believed, were responsible for the transmission of illnesses from one person to another. He proposed three modes of transmission. Direct contact, which involves physical interaction between individuals, fomites, which are contaminated objects that can carry disease-causing seeds, and at a distance where the seeds could travel through the air or other means. Fracastoro's ideas were revolutionary for his time. They represented a significant departure from the accepted medical theories and practices of the day. He recognized the importance of isolating infected individuals. This was a crucial insight, as it helped to prevent the spread of contagious diseases.
he also understood the role of contaminated objects in spreading disease. By identifying fomites as a mode of transmission, he highlighted the need for cleanliness and disinfection. His work laid the groundwork for future advancements in epidemiology. The principles he established would later be built upon by scientists and researchers in the centuries to come. While Fracastoro's seeds were not quite the microorganisms we know today, his insights were remarkably prescient. He had an intuitive understanding of the mechanisms of disease transmission that would only be confirmed with the advent of modern microbiology. His work demonstrates the power of observation and deduction in understanding disease. Fracastoro's legacy is a testament to the enduring importance of questioning established beliefs and seeking new knowledge. Section 5. John Grant and the Power of Data Unraveling Mortality Secrets In the 17th century, John Grant, a London haberdasher, embarked on a groundbreaking endeavor, analyzing mortality data. Living in a bustling city like London, Grant was surrounded by the constant ebb and flow of life and death, which piqued his curiosity about the patterns underlying these events. Grant's work, published in his book Natural and Political Observations Made Upon the Bills of Mortality in 1662, marked a turning point in demography and public health. This seminal work was not just a collection of observations, but a meticulous analysis that laid the groundwork for future studies in population health. The bills of mortality were weekly records of deaths in London. These records, initially intended to monitor plague deaths, became a rich source of data for Grant's analysis. Grant meticulously analyzed these records, uncovering patterns and trends in mortality. His attention to detail and methodical approach allowed him to draw significant conclusions from what might have seemed like mundane data. He noticed seasonal variations in deaths. For instance, he observed that more people died in the colder months, a pattern that highlighted the impact of environmental factors on health. He also observed that certain diseases were more prevalent in specific areas. This spatial analysis was revolutionary, as it suggested that living conditions and local environments played a crucial role in public health. Grant's work demonstrated the power of data analysis in understanding population health. By systematically studying the data, he was able to make informed predictions and identify trends that were not immediately obvious. His quantitative approach laid the foundation for modern epidemiology. Today, epidemiologists continue to use data to track disease outbreaks, understand health trends, and develop strategies to combat public health issues. By identifying patterns in mortality, he paved the way for interventions to improve public health. His work showed that with the right data, it was possible to implement measures that could save lives and improve the overall health of the population. Grant's contributions extend beyond public health. His innovative use of data analysis influenced many other fields. His work influenced the development of statistics and actuarial science. The methods he developed for analyzing mortality data were adapted and expanded upon, leading to advancements in these disciplines. His legacy lies in recognizing the value of data in understanding and addressing societal issues. Grant's pioneering efforts remind us of the importance of data in making informed decisions and shaping a better future for all. Section 6. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, Unveiling the Microscopic World The invention of the microscope in the 17th century revolutionized our understanding of the natural world. It opened up an entirely new dimension of scientific inquiry, allowing us to see beyond the limitations of the naked eye. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch draper and scientist, played a pivotal role in this revolution. Despite having no formal scientific training, his curiosity and dedication led him to make some of the most significant discoveries in microbiology. His meticulous observations through his handcrafted microscopes revealed a hidden universe of microorganisms. Leeuwenhoek's attention to detail and his ability to create lenses with remarkable precision set him apart from his contemporaries. Leeuwenhoek's microscopes were remarkably powerful for their time. They could magnify objects up to 300 times, which was unprecedented and allowed for detailed observation of tiny entities. 
they allowed him to observe objects in unprecedented detail. His observations were so precise that he could describe the structure and movement of microorganisms with great accuracy. He examined a vast array of specimens, from rainwater to tooth scrapings. His curiosity knew no bounds, and he meticulously documented his findings, providing detailed descriptions and drawings. In 1676, Leeuwenhoek made a groundbreaking discovery. He observed tiny, motile creatures he called animalcules. These observations were revolutionary, as they revealed a world teeming with life that was previously unknown. These microorganisms, later identified as bacteria and protozoa, were invisible to the naked eye. Leeuwenhoek's discovery of these tiny creatures was a monumental step forward in the field of biology. Their discovery challenged the prevailing belief in spontaneous generation. The idea that life could arise from non-living matter was widely accepted, but Leeuwenhoek's findings provided evidence to the contrary. Leeuwenhoek's observations opened up a new frontier in biology. His work laid the foundation for future scientists to explore the microscopic world and understand the complexities of life at a cellular level. The existence of microorganisms had profound implications for understanding disease and contagion. It became clear that these tiny entities could be responsible for causing illnesses, leading to a new approach in medical science. His work paved the way for the germ theory of disease. This theory, which states that microorganisms are the cause of many diseases, revolutionized medicine and led to significant advancements in public health and hygiene.